Welcome back friends to video seven in the series. Let's get right to it. So here's our Versalam beam. It's 36 feet and it's gonna span the whole length of the back ADU and the covered front porch. We're gonna trim it down a little bit, but we've already gone and done layout. So every 24 inches on center, we have all of our marks for the two by 12 roof rafters that are gonna meet it. And before we put it up with the boom truck, I'm gonna go through with a sanding sealer and hit the only part that's exposed is like the bottom four inches and then the bottom of it. And I'm gonna, I did a light sand and now I'm gonna hit it all with a sanding sealer. So when it's up, we'll have to do a little bit of ladder touch up, especially under where the stickers are. And we'll probably put a second coat on it, but this is gonna be uh, nice to get it done first because it's gonna seal it. It's gonna keep fingerprints off of it. This is an exposed beam. Part of this open vaulted design in the loft of the back ADU is looking at this feature. So we wanna make sure we take care of it. Um, don't mar it up if we can help it. This is probably a, about a $1,600 piece of wood. So this beam is gonna be oh, about 16 feet up in the vault. So it's not gonna be um, easily visible. So we don't have to do a perfect job here, but this first coat, we're just trying to seal it. I'm using a water-based sanding sealer. And then I'll also roll the bottom and then the first few inches of the other side. Again, this is all gonna be covered by rafter and insulation. So I'm just really trying to coat the bottom three inches. It doesn't look as big as it is on camera, but that's a, about a 1800 pound beam, five and a half by 18 and a half deep by 33 feet long. The hardest part about this big lofted cathedral ceiling is setting this supporting blue lamb beam. The reason it's so big and chunky and heavy is because it holds the whole weight of the roof. There's no collar tie or rafter tie in this application. It's a lot of extra work, quite a bit more money, but it's three or four times the product when you're done. Nail it boys, it's where it lives. Here's just a real quick example of our starter strip. This is the expensive AC 5.8s and the bottom of it is perfectly smooth and sanded and paint ready. And then we use a little bit rougher material CDX. It's about half the price for our main sheets. Here's a good shot of the ventilated ridge one inch air gap at the top. So we hold the two by 12 roof rafters up an inch and then we run our 5.8 CDX plywood up to that. And this little area here is where the hot air will be able to flow out that enters down at the bird box. Carrying on with interior framing and interior rough plumbing top out, Pete and Reese and Chris are jamming behind me. Andy's next door in the back ADU doing some top out plumbing. Let's walk around and talk about a few of those components. Starting to look more like an interior house now that the balloon frame walls are done, fiberglass tubs and tub shower combos are in. Make sure to put those in before you do your wall framing uh, or else you'll be pulling out a sawzall to cut out wall studs. They won't fit in most cases. We can start taking the braces down. So these lateral braces that we're holding the gable end wall um, once the roof is sheathed, sheeted and we have all of our supporting balloon frame walls that hold our ridge beam. Braces can come down and we can have quite a bit more room to work. This side of the roof is sheeted. And next, we're gonna be moving over to this side, covering up this big skylight. Got Andy in here doing rough plumbing. He just mounted this fiberglass tub shower combo. We've got our underfloor plumbing that's coming up and getting connected to our drains. It's a pretty simple detail on this one one here. All the plumbing is on one wall. Guys are up here ready to hang the fascia or barge rafter, maybe called different things in different areas, but we have these outlookers two by fours and then we have our false ridge beam up top and we're going to trim that out with two by 12 finished trim board i've done i don't know a couple dozen of these trim details and every time i do one it gets worse so i'm going to be hands off on this one i'm actually going to leave when they're doing it because i'm so picky i'll be just looking at the joint the whole time Pricing thus far, so I paid the framers on Friday, we're at about $6,800 in labor thus far. And that's to fully frame this unit, 
get it sheathed and ready for windows. And then the back unit is about three quarters of the way done. We still have to roll out the rafters and sheath that roof and build the front porch. But I figure all in framing labor is gonna be about $10,000. And that will include um, house wrap and window installation. We're exactly 33 days into the project and we have the front ADU completely framed up. Next, what I'm gonna be doing is priming and painting the underside of the eaves and the fascia behind me. Once we're framed, we really wanna rush to get our roof on, or at least dried in, which would be our roofing felt paper that's gonna keep the building dry. To stay on schedule and to complete this build fast, we really have to keep the interior dry. That's the hardest part. If we get rain this week and all the interior components get wet, I'm gonna to have to let them dry for another week or two before we can insulate. We wanna be under 16% moisture content in our framing members before we put our fiberglass insulation in the walls. So that's really the limiting factor on time. That's why it's so imperative that we get a roof on this thing. Before we put a roof on it, uh, it's gonna get flashed. And if we don't paint these fascia boards and our barge rafters before the flashing goes on, we're gonna to have to get up there Somebody driving by and waving. We're gonna have to get up there with a brush and cut in under the flashing. So we really wanna shoot it all in. First, that's what I'm gonna do today. The roofer's coming tomorrow to hopefully at least put roofing paper down. The back unit, we're gonna roll out the roof rafters tomorrow, so that one's not quite ready. Ideally, I'd paint the eaves and fascia on both to be really efficient, but just by chance that we don't get that back unit finished before the roofers get here, this one will be dried in. So that's what we're gonna do today. On a Sunday, nobody's here, it's quiet, I can work, I can get the painting done. A quick coat of primer, and then I'll do two coats of our Eve color paint. This is a two by 12 finished choice trim. Uh, it's called Vintage. And when we cut the ends, it's nice to get up there and prime them. You know, sunlight or water will make the wood check. We'll be painting up underneath the eaves on the front and back. And once this barge rafter material is painted, then we can put the flashing and paper on and we won't have to worry about masking off the roof when we're spraying. Just a really quick demo of this paint sprayer. I'll cover it in more detail when we're doing painting as a full task, not just some pickup work. But this is a sprayer that I bought from the local paint store. It's a professional grade Graco. They don't pay me to say that, but um, you get what you pay for when it comes to a sprayer. So I've got our intake line into our primer bucket here. And then this is a sludge bucket where we take our discharge hose and we set it in there so we don't make a huge mess. First thing I'm gonna do is turn my um, sprayer to prime and then I'm gonna turn it on until I see paint coming out of the discharge hose here. At what point now I'm gonna take the pressure off of my line. We don't wanna have a blowout. And then I'm gonna turn the sprayer from prime to paint. Now that the pump is primed, it's gonna take about 45 seconds of full trigger to get paint all the way to the end of this 50 foot hose. First 45 seconds will be water that I use to clean out the line. Now that our gun is primed and we have paint all the way to the end of the line, there's still gonna be a little bit of water. The first couple of minutes of spraying is gonna be a little bit diluted. So go over that spot where you start. Uh, this nice little trusty 24 inch extension keeps me from getting on a ladder all the time. And you can adjust your pressure to get the kind of fan that you want. You know, we've got um, a nice light pressure here because it's kind of windy and I don't want to blow overspray onto everything, including cars going by. So be aware of your overspray when you're using a sprayer, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. It's really easy to paint everything. We strategically stacked our material here so we'd have a little bit of a step ladder and we're just gonna put a nice light coat. You can imagine how much more difficult this would be if there was flashing that's pre-painted or roofing there. We'd be getting overspray up onto our roof. So that's why we're rushing out here on a Sunday to get this done before the roofers get here. It's so much easier. Then I'm gonna come back up underneath the eaves and go back the other way. And this is primer after this coat of light primer dries. We're gonna put on two coats of the finished color 
and these eaves will be done. When we do spray the body later, we spray the siding, we'll get a little bit of overspray up in the eaves and we'll have to get up there and touch them up, but the brunt of the work will be done. We won't have to mask off around our flashing, around our roof, or around our gutters. It's always nice to paint in the shade if we can. PPE is also a must. I'm not wearing a respirator because the wind is at my back, but every once in a while there's a little bit of a blast of overspray, so I wear these uh, trusty goggles with a forward um, advance on this thin film, so they always stay clear. Again, we're going for a really light coat, just getting up underneath these eaves. This is a Seal Gripper from Miller Paint Products. And I usually would tint the paint to close to or the exact same color as the body. This is gonna be an elusive white uh, when it's finished, which is a pretty light color. It's, it's um, a creamy white, but I had a bunch of gray primer, so that's why it's not a match. It's all about being efficient and using what I already had in the shop. It'll take a little bit more paint to cover the gray with a light color, um, but not too much, and we'll recycle the paint we already have. There's something kind of soothing about watching paint go on. It's like getting your inner Bob Ross. Like, we'll just put a tree, little tree right there, little tree. Just like that, anybody can do it. It's harder than you might think to be working and filming at the same time, so cut me a little slack. One thing I like to do, and it doesn't take a whole lot more work, is paint the leading edge of the plywood. It's gonna be behind some flashing and some roofing paper, but over time, moisture gathers right there, and when we've torn off old roofs before, the leading edge of the plywood always has delamination and water damage. Only takes a little bit more time to just seal that while we're here. Got Reese up here nailing on the outlookers. These two by fours are pocketed in to the very end two by 12, and they hold our finished barge rafter. Nice little skeleton detail of a roof you don't get to see every day. We got Chris up here nailing in blocks. Hey, put the pretty side out, please. Flip that over, thank you. <laughs> no, I'm super thankful to have Chris. He puts in a lot of work here, does all the hard labor and heavy lifting, and I give him a lot of crap, but glad to have him. We got PK up in the loft doing all the smart work, all the math. He's definitely the brains behind this crew. Framing in this back window, we're going with a 36 by 36, also known as a 3030 casement window. So it will be on a hinge and you can crank it open 90 degrees. Should let afternoon airflow come into the loft. Here's the underside of the beam that we already were able to stain. A lot easier to do it now. Rolling out the roof on the back ADU right now with our 2x12s every 24 inches on center. Reese is up top and he's going to explain exactly what's going on. So we've got our uh, layout on our beam when we set it and we have our layout on our wall. We've pre-cut the uh, rafters and they're going up really, really smooth. So we should have be done in about half hour. Okay, and what type of roof is this? Are we, uh, what it's would you call this? Cut, cut and stack, nine and 12. And uh, yeah, there we are. Awesome, thanks Reese. So again, two by 12 roof rafters. They're 16 feet long. We cut a custom two by six tail on these. This is also a vaulted ceiling or a cathedral ceiling, which means it's not a truss. There's a complete open area. There's no tension and compression. There's no cords. That way when we go into a small space like this, we have volume all the way to the top. One of the negatives or the extra work pieces of a vault or cathedral ceiling is the ventilated bays. So just like the front ADU, this one too is gonna have an air vent in each individual bay between the insulation. And we capture that by doing a ventilated block on the bottom, and then we'll have one inch slits at the top with a ventilated roof ridge system that I'll cover when we put the roofing down. Zach up here working off the ladder, putting down some 30 pound synthetic felt that's gonna go under our composition shingle roofing. We just put in our roofing order. We're going with a slate gray. It should be here and loaded with a conveyor belt onto the roof tomorrow. Here's the last look at the back ADU without the covered front porch. We're just getting ready to post up and build a six foot deep by 22 foot wide lofted covered 
front porch. Really excited, we've done this one several times and everybody loves the storage space. Pete, doing layout on the beam real quick and then we're gonna use manpower to hoist it up and put it on the front porch. Wrapping up the end of our 35th day and we have the front ADU dried in, the back ADU porch is just about framed. We're gonna sheet that tomorrow. There's three points in a job that I feel the most satisfaction and the most relief. First is when all the site work is done, the foundation is set and we backfill. The second is when we get the units dried in. That's just such a good feeling. And then the third is when we get our certificate of occupancy at completion. So once these are both dried in, to me that's kind of like the halfway point and it's all downhill from here. Front porch framing details coming along nice. We've got a 2030 window up in the gable and the spot that Reese is standing in is gonna be our lofted storage above the covered front porch. Putting the last couple outlookers on, we're gonna hang the barge rafters and then sheet this bad boy. Got sheeting started on the back side here, shady side of the building. We're gonna sheet that gable, hang the barge, get this thing moving. Uh, asphalt shingles are getting delivered in the morning, so we're pushing hard to get this whole roof decked out. This is an awesome tool behind us. It's a belt boom and the roofing warehouse shows up and they put all of our comp shingles, all of our nails, all of our ventilated ridge, all of our ridge cap up on the unit so we don't have to carry anything up a ladder. That's one of the pieces that's really important is having the relationships to be able to make a call when you're ready and get this truck out here to help you so you don't have to work so hard. If you don't have the relationships yourself, that's where your builder Picking a builder uh, is gonna come in. Always try to find somebody to help you on your job that has relationships in your local market so you can get people and tools like this on your job. Windows are showing up this afternoon. We're gonna do house wrap and throw the windows and doors in. Have these places buttoned up and lockable. Here's our ventilated ridge subcap. And this is a core vent plastic product that allows air to come out through the top of the slit in the roof decking and venturi out, letting that warm air escape. And then we'll cap that off with our prefabricated architectural ridge cap. Roofers up top and we just cut the underlayment off of the ventilated ridge. So you keep the underlayment across it until you get completely dried in that way if it rains it doesn't come seeping through that hole and now that he's ready to put the ridge vent and the ridge cap on, only at that time you cut it this is just a follow-up on the example of why we always want to paint our eaves and fascia if we can prior to the roofer showing up the edge flashing is pre-painted and had we not painted these barge rafters and fascia boards on the eaves, we would have had to mask off not only the roof so we didn't get overspray on it, but also the flashing and it's a lot more work. That's a wrap for this week's video. As you can see behind us, we are dried in. The roofer just pulled out just in the nick of time. It just started raining and sprinkling now. There's a big storm moving in, so we're really thankful to have Jason and the guys come over and get this done. We have to build failure into our plans and sometimes we also get lucky, so. I'm um, thankful again for that. We'll see you on the next video. What's up? JPDX, check him out. <laughs> you know, you're in a good neighborhood when all your neighbors drive by and wave and talk about your project and heckle you. Um, one of the joys of investing in your hometown. We'll see you on the next video next week, I hope, where we're gonna go over house wrap, we're gonna put in the windows, we're gonna do the trim, we're gonna start the siding, a ton of cool exterior features on these ADUs. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to like and subscribe.